Hey, St. Luke family, St. Luke's well wishes, those who are our guests, we thank God for you. Wherever you are, continue to keep us in prayer. It's Word and Worship time here at the St. Luke Christian Church in Huntsville, Alabama. We're just so thankful that God gave us an opportunity, another opportunity. This is a day that God has made. Let's rejoice and be glad. It's by the grace of God uh, that we are here. It's just one more day that His grace has shown up on my behalf and on your behalf. We're going to we're going to go into prayer, uh, we're going to praise and worship prayer uh, just a little bit. And we're going to overview Sunday. And I'm going to leave you alone today, but I want to lift a few things out of Sunday's lesson that I want you to take heart with. Because it's, it's unusual. It's, 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 it's something that's unusual in this lesson, but something so powerful. It's something to get you out of self because I find so often people are um, ambivalent. Um, they are they are hard. It's hard for them to share their struggling um, with others, and so we want to just look at this and uh, we want to lift it a little higher. Um, let's just tell the Lord I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you cared for me thank you in such a special way that's why I praise you Lift you up, magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. God, our Father, we come before you with thanksgiving in our heart. Thank you, God. Thank you for one more day. Thank you for goodness and mercy. We didn't earn nor do we deserve. Thank you, God, for continuing to bestow upon us in spite of who we are and how we are so often. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your name be glorified in the words, in the works, and in the ways of Jesus Christ. Help us all to study those gospels so we can see you through the actions of Jesus Christ and come to know the great love that you have for each of us even in our fallenness your word says you so loved us that you gave your only son what great love you have commended to us and that yet while we were sinners uh, you, you saved us Christ died for us the ungodly God thank you thank you Father Father help us to have behavior, conduct, and be an attitude that reflect you to others. Yes, Lord, give us behavior. Fix us in these areas of where, where we'll be a light shining in these dark and these dismal times, and it is needed. Help us to continue to do like David, to um, hide your word in our heart that we send out against you. Continue depending on the word being a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Help us, oh God. In these confusion times of misinformation everywhere and conspiracies everywhere, let us know your word has not and will not change. It's steady. Help us, oh God. We pray for everyone on our sick list and all of our seniors, all the men of every holler of your hand as only you can. Thank you, God. Bless, bless every home under the sound of my voice. 
in the name of Jesus. Bless our families, our dads, our mom, our single parents. Bless them, God. Hold them, those who are guarding, those grandparents who are doing uh, the mothering for for their children. God, I pray that you would um, give them the strength, give them the insight, give them the resources they need in the name of Jesus. I pray that love be in every home. Sometimes, Father, we see people act out of resentment toward little ones because they are having to go through it so much to to provide for that. God, have it not be that way. Help us not take our frustration out upon uh, people who are not at fault. Not take our fr frustration out, God. We say thank you. And, and help, help us to be an example for young people as Christians. Help us not use terminologies that they don't shouldn't use. Not do things that we don't want to see them do. Help us. Guide our families, guide our children. We say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And God, we pray especially for those who are in the hospital. We, 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 a mind and a heart is on Emma White. Now, God, I pray a special touch for all those who are on the sick list, but a special touch for Emma. But God, I pray for, for, and then thank you for those who uh, struggled and continue to go on. Many. Uh, or that way, going through their own crisis. Help us now in this time of prom and this time of graduation for our young people when they get careless and callous at times. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will build a hedge of protection all around them in the name of Jesus. Do it, Father. So, Father, we say thank you. Give us a knowledge. Give us understanding. Give us wisdom that we be in a place to, you can use us to lead your people in a way that glorifies you. Do that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. We thank God for you. And the lesson's going to be short again today. Very short. Because all we want to do is overview Sunday's message. And Sunday's message... Um, comes to us um, uh, from the book of from the book of Acts, um, and when Paul is in Acts, um, what we find in Acts, well, not what we find, what Acts is. Acts is uh, the lesson of the what men can do, what people can do when they are empowered by the Holy Ghost. What people can do when they're empowered by by the Holy Ghost, I, I, I'm just 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 thankful for to know that Acts give us a, a lesson that helps us uh, to understand um, what happens when God power, God's holy power, is is on us. Paul and Silas on that lesson was locked up in, in jail, but they weren't, I said, they were locked, I said locked up. Um, we have to realize and we have to understand ourselves that there comes a time when people, um, people, are going to be against you for doing the right thing. Now, 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 I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this together. The Holy Spirit empowered the disciples and apostles to do different miracles, different things. The focus in, in Acts is first 11 chapters or so. It's going to be on Peter. Then it's going to turn and the Jews. And then it's going to turn to Paul and the Gentiles. And and, 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 and and the power that Peter uses in early in the book of Acts to heal the man who was at the temple gate begging for assistance. P Paul and, 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 and P I mean Peter and, and James come along, or Peter and James come along and and, 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 and he he's healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then in, in Paul ministry the same power 
is you. Now, the power of the Holy Spirit enters and dwells and then uses them to bring forth miracles of healing, miracles of deliverance throughout the book of Acts. And so what the Acts is doing and the reason why it's set up the way it is is because the Holy Ghost is spread and I mean the church is spread and the salvation, the good news of salvation is spreading um, based upon the power of the Holy Ghost using men to let the world know, go ye into all the world, preach and teach. And, and you can't do these things effectively unless you're empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's why so many people get frustrated in ministries is because they don't wait to the movement of the Holy Spirit. We try so hard to do things in and of ourselves with our own power. Well, we'll get frustrated because often when you're moving in the way God told you to move, there are going to be um, adversaries. There are going to be people who try to stop you, things that try to stop you, near and far. But we're in Acts chapter 16. And I need to read again two verses that I preached out of Sunday because I talked about a prayer meeting at midnight. But I want you to see that there's another powerful component in the delivery process from Paul and Silas was locked up. Now, since after thinking about this passage, Paul and Silas were locked up in the innermost jail they were locked up but everybody else in jail was locked down it, god's just good that way thank you holy ghost paul and silas was locked. let me read it and we're going to talk about it we're going to leave you alone paul and silas it says at midnight i'm in chapter 16 i'm in verse 25 and you have to read the rest of it to get the contextual apparatus that this text is wrapped in it says and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them pray and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were were everyone's bands were loose. Remember, last week I had talked to you about um Peter them going back and becoming non productive going back because of the persecution, going back because of the execution of Jesus, even though Peter, according to text, had been with him as a resurrected Savior, still going forward was difficult. Going forward was uncomfortable. So Peter was propelled to go back to what he used to do in his comfort zone, and I've been there, and I know about that. In this lesson, the Apostle Paul, who knows the Lord, who met him on the Damascus Trail, he wasn't like Peter. Peter could say, I saw him walk on water. In fact, I walked on water at his command. I, I saw him heal the sick. I saw him give sight to the blind. I, I, I was there when he fed the, the multitude. I, I was there when Lazarus was raised from from the dead. I, I was there. Paul couldn't say that, but what Paul could say was, I had an encounter with the Christ for myself. And that's that, 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 that's, that's, it. that's important for us today, uh, who've been walking with the Lord uh, for a while. You got to always remember your encounter and what it was. You're accredited to your knowledge the knowing Christ. I know he'll make a way for what? I know what he did in whatever event it is. Don't forget those things because quite often your encounter is the only thing you have to hold on to and the only thing that lets you keep knowing that God is a way maker, hallelujah, out of no way. He 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 can do it, you know. He'll 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 do it. And those of us who he's done it before previously ought to be able to let the world know and the doubters know and the naysayers know that he'll do it. He can, he's able uh to do it. In this passage, they had been doing the right thing. They had been fulfilling their assignment. They were doing what they were called to do, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who had not heard. And they'd been being in a, 
a young lady was uh, interfering just by telling those around that these are the men of the most high God who are teaching you the way to be saved. And it's time you're trying to teach folk how to be saved, there's going to be interference. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, and we don't live in a time that the old warriors tried to teach you to, to be saved. Get born again, they would say. They would teach you, go, go to church. Any time that you're out trying to teach people or live in a way where people can learn the lesson of salvation, you can expect opposition. Wherever you're trying to spread salvation, you can expect opposition. Wherever you're trying to share Christ, you can expect opposition. And sometimes you don't pay attention to it. But you just try to share Christ and watch folks out there. Mm -hmm. Or watch, watch. But many of us as Christians, many of us who have the evidence, many of us who have the testimony of the reality of what God can do in our lives, are often quiet and shut down like we're sequestered because people have so much um, negativism. I don't want to talk about that Christ. I want to talk you ask me such a stuff. I'm just telling you Christ is the way. And, and so often we are, our, our witness is wrecked by our ways. Let, let's let's get into this. I just want to lift this because there's something I didn't lift as high as I wanted to lift. I tagged the title on this tech last week, um, prayer meeting at midnight. And of course, understand that midnight is not a time of day. You know what midnight is, 12, night, 12 o'clock midnight, we know what it is. But midnight refers to conditions and situations. We can have, we've all had our, had our midnight experiences. If not, you're going to have one. And those who've had have them are going to have some more of them. we got some, some midnights going to come into your life. And it is quite normal for us when midnight hits us, especially when we can have the testimony that Paul had. Lord, I was just preaching your gospel. I was just praying. I was just showing people that you love the world. I was just, I was just giving my testimony, Lord. And now I'm script, I'm beat, I'm uh, shackled, and I'm put in the worst part of jail. Don't expect good stuff to happen all the time when you're good and good stuff. But it's in our, it's our mind. It's in our way of presenting God and presenting the church. You child, you just go to church, everything will be all right. No, no. Just go to church. Don't be telling people everything going to be all right or everything is going to become right for them. That's not the case. Not biblically. The Bible doesn't give evidence to that testimony. You know, so, so, what Paul is doing is the right thing. What Silas is doing is the right thing. But the wrong thing happens to them. This is a way of life. This is a kingdom rule. If you're if you're living in the kingdom trying to do the right thing, there are going to be some stuff to come against you to try to cramp your witness. And, and, and here's what Paul says. He says, they prayed. The book says they prayed. They're beat, they're stripped, they're shackled, they're put in jail, but they prayed. And the book says, they praised God, sang praises unto God. That's the part right there. You see, the first part, prayed, is what we normally do. There's nothing wrong with it. It's expected. That you pray and tell the Lord and ask the Lord or go before the Lord. Not just in your midnights, but it's expected that you do it. It's expected that you praise the Lord when things are going well. Thank you, Lord, I have that new job. Thank you, Lord, my mother, my sister, my friend. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you bless me with this, that. Thank you, Lord. We that that that's 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 praise that's the way we do it but this text tell us the power of praising in midnight we pray in midnight don't get me wrong 
But this power, the book tells us, this text tells us that not only to pray, but to praise. And that really doesn't register well with our idea of following Christ. It's not new. It's not on our uh, uh, it's not on the front burner. On the front burner is if I follow Christ, everything should work out, go well. I'm on. I'm on. I'm gonna. Things are gonna be positive because I'm following Christ. And even to say that, if we look at the road Christ traveled, it doesn't add up to what we said. See, 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 the road that Christ traveled was one that was sacrificial, one that where he encountered persecution, doing good all the time, healing, teaching, going into the bad side of town, letting them know that the Lord loved them, laying his hands on people others wouldn't touch. Embracing folk. So much so that they said, is this man a rabbi? Don't he know what kind of woman that is? See, if he was a rabbi, he would know that this is a street woman. And he ain't got no business dealing with her. But but and and, and, and but, but but Jesus um, comes to show us that even though there are others who may not um, accept us. That God will. God will come to us. God will, will do that. That's what Jesus is showing us. That not with our, with our weaknesses, this woman, with, with our weakness, with, with our record, the Lord will still come to us. The Lord still loves us. But the Apostle Paul uh, is a lesson of what happens when you meet Christ for real. He was on one side of the Christ thing at one point, but he met Christ. He was on the other side. Oh, God, that's some lessons right there that would not have nothing to do with what we're talking about. But sometimes we have a, a bad attitude, a bad um, idea about folk we haven't met yet. When Paul meets Jesus, the risen Christ, he begins to... Um, or uh, becomes one of the most prolific disciples and teachers of of, of, of the ways of God. In fact, Paul uh, is the one who is able to tell us uh, that the wages of sin is death. He's able to tell us that we are it's by uh, by grace through faith we are saved. It, it, it's it's Paul, and he is. Uh, in jail because he was preaching and because he was teaching that God loves us and saves us through Jesus Christ gets locked up uh, something bad happens when he's doing good something wrong happens to him when he's doing right that does not sit well with me or with us when I'm doing right and I'm doing uh, what the Lord says do, I expect the Lord to, 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 to build a hedge around me so I don't have to go through that kind of stuff. In, in this particular text, the Bible says uh, that in their midnight experience, they not only prayed, but they praised. Unusual. The, the prayer is usual. People will come up in a minute and say, "Trouble is in, when trouble's in their way." They come up in a minute and say, "Pray for me. I'm having this. I'm going through this. I'm going through that." Well, they may not tell you what's pray for me. Pray for me. I'm going through something, child. I've been in this thing a long time, and no one has ever come up to me. He says, baby, I'm going through a rough time. Let's praise God. It's midnight. Let's praise God. In the noonday light, 
people will say, let's praise God. I got a promotion. I, I got a new job. I got, let's praise him. God, let's praise him. But in all of my years of doing what it is I do, no one has ever come to me and laid out a litany of trials and tribulations, trouble and stuff going on and look at me and say, let's praise God. Let's praise God. I've known people to praise God. Don't get me wrong. But no one ever come and said, Pastor, let's praise God. Such and such happened and I lost my job. Let's praise God. I've had people come up and say, Mom, let's praise God. I lost my job, but I managed so well to have 16 months of my, my everything I need. Let's praise God. That's one thing. I've had that to happen in a number of ways. But, but, but think about what I'm saying. I want you to think about it. When people are in trouble, trials, and tribulation, when people are um, stripped, beat, shackled, and locked, prayer is usual. Praise is not. The unusual thing about this text is there is not just a prayer meeting, but there's a praise meeting. We use this title and we use this text. I think we do it um, from Psalms that says, God inhabits or God dwells in the praise of his people. I know this thing to be true. I know that God shows up in the praise. And his presence on the premise of your problem is power. God shows up when you praise. And his presence on the premise empowers you with the problem. She, she, in, in this particular passage, the prayer was usual, but the praise was unusual. And listen at what happens in the text. It doesn't say they rehearsed their case before the Lord. The, Paul is being beaten. Paul is being whipped. He's suffering with Christ. And that's what we got to be willing to do. Suffer with Christ. And it is in this jail facing punishment, more punishment, that he not only prayed, but they praised the Lord. God inhabits the praise of his people. He praised the Lord, and not only that, your witness works wonders when you're in midnight praising. Say it again. Your witness works wonders when you're in your midnight praising some of you have had folks say look at you and you got things together all together for them and they say you just don't know what child you just don't know what i got to go through you have this and you have that and look at you and blah 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 you don't understand what i'm going through so your 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 praise and your don't mean a whole lot to folk. But if you are going through and 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 shackles and beat and 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 and, and locked, locked up, not down. Paul, remember that the power of their witness was so powerful to the people who were locked down heard them pray. They were locked down, but Paul, Paul and Silas was locked in a, in a higher dimension, locked up, and 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 they prayed to what it was they preached about. They prayed to the God who was able. They prayed to the God who who in a, in effect they were praying and teaching about, and got in trouble about teaching and preaching about God and they get in trouble but they pray and praise God. They counted it joy to be locked up 
for preaching that Jesus Christ died for the sins. They counted, they counted it all joy. They counted, uh, they counted it joy. Lord, you let me go through for you. Listen to me. Listen to what I tell you this. When you witness out of the fact of, 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 of and, and, and you're witnessing out of trouble, you're going through trouble, you're going through trials, and you're going through situations, but you give God all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. So Lord, I thank you anyhow. And I thank you anyhow. It, 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 in this text, it says those who were locked down heard those who were locked up. And when the Lord showed up to deliver the lockup, he also delivered the lockdown. When you read the text, everybody, when, when they prayed and they praised God from their midnight situation, everybody was released, was loosed, their bands were loosed. And I can imagine those who were in prison prior to Paul and Silas coming to prison. They were in there for various crimes. When Paul and Silas come, they're in there for their ability to teach the word of God and preach or following Jesus Christ. Ought not to have been there for real, but I believe that the prison was a place, that lockdown situation, they had that God, that God allowed them to go through that so that Jesus could be preached to those who were locked in jail. Prayer and praise me in your midnight can be so powerful. Those people wonder, how can you have joy? How can your spirits be so high? How can you still have joy with all that I know you must be going through? And when you praise God and the Lord, I just thank you. I've had people too say, oh, I just know the Lord is in this with me. I'm just going to hold to his unchanging hand. Praising God openly. Some, sometime we walk around here at our midnight and we're trying to cover it, smile and pretend. But it can help somebody that's locked down when you locked up in your midnight experience and you're able to give God praise, glorify his name. You're able to pray. God inhabits the praise of his people. And when they praised, it presented a place for God to, to indwell. And when God is on the premise of your problem, he empowers you to prevail. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Teach us how to praise, pray and praise in our midnight experience. It's not, it's unusual. It doesn't even seem to make sense. But let us do it in a way that others will see that even though we're going through whatever, you're still our God. You're still worthy of glory, honor, and praise. Amen. There may be someone here who listened to me tonight and this evening. You want to give your name, your life to Jesus Christ. You can do that. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. I ask Jesus to come into my heart and own me as his child. Amen. If you've done that, we welcome you to the household of faith. We thank God for you. Be sure to contact us so we can add you to our list and reach out and contact you. If you have a church home and the Holy Spirit has, has touched your spirit and said this is to be your church home, why don't you come? If you're local, we want you to come uh, and call us. If you're not, you call us and, and let us know who your name, who you, what your name is, and who you are. We'll add you to the road and get you 
in contact with you so that we can go through our integration program. We thank God for you. Pray at midnight. Praise at midnight. And the prisoners heard them. And everybody in the jail became free. Be blessed.